It's Wen Lin from La Princesse des Beaux-Arts. Welcome back. Now, I'm filming this from my bed because I'm about to watch a movie on my laptop and go to sleep. But before I doze off to dreamland, I thought it's very important to make a video for you guys about how to make a art portfolio, artist portfolio, whatever you want to call it. Just a little announcement, I'm doing portfolio coaching sessions down in the link below on my website which you can book for one hour and this is specifically for young artists making a professional art portfolio or making an art portfolio for art school applications or university applications and if you book one with me you get the art school guide included. Yeah, so definitely check it out if that could be helpful for you. Dossier artistique, which is quite important when you're presenting it for art programs, residencies, to gallerists, for competitions, when you're applying to anything and you have to show your works, it's important to have a well-polished art portfolio, okay? This is specifically um, for all the stuff I mentioned before and for a bit of context, uh, this afternoon I met up with a pretty well-established French Parisian art gallerist who gave me some tips and looked over my portfolio and gave me a lot of really useful information and I wanted to share that with you guys. So this is the stuff that you'll have to figure out on your own that you don't really get classes on. So first off, you want to get a cover page. I'm hiding my personal information, but this is where I put my personal contact information, for example, and then you want your title. This lady, she recommended me just write portfolio and maybe the year. You don't need to write like dossier artistique because it sounds a little bit like academic, like you're still a student. So anyways, then you want to go on with a little artist statement or introduction. So I like to get like binding. You can do this. Um, I did it at Office Depot in Paris. Um, I started out with all of my artworks in here. So I did basically filled it. I basically filled up the page as much as I could. Um, so you can really see the details, which right away, the first thing she mentioned was that you need to have the title, medium, dimensions, and date with maybe a brief description of each piece right next to the artwork. Because if you don't do that, well, people don't really have an idea when they're seeing this initially of what it is they're looking at. It could be 10 feet tall, it could be 10 inches tall, or 10 centimeters. So it's really important to have that description and the details, medium, date, title with each image that you present. And that was the first little thing I needed to change. And basically my portfolio, it went on to look a bit like that and continues on. You can find all of these on my Instagram, obviously, but basically I put in a few pages of some high quality images that I printed out on like nice paper. You don't want it to feel like flimsy or anything like that. And then put in some images of your works. They could be slightly different, obviously. And then this is a prize that I did, an exhibition. So I added that with um, pictures of the artwork I made. And then I made another little error here, which is I didn't put the descriptions right next to the images. You want to, instead of having like an index of descriptions and titles and details, you want that to go along with each image. That way you don't have to flip back and forth. So this, she said, um, the gallerist, she just told me like, edit this out. You want to edit out anything that's unnecessary. So that's text or pictures or pages. You don't want to repeat anything you write. You want to be very concise, um, get the point across. And here was another little correction she wanted me to make. So here I wrote a bit about my artistic creative process, which is good um, to give an idea. But here I started out with some more heavy topics, like how I use uh, sewing and lace as an allegory of the skin and how I use that to divert some um, psychosomatic skin compulsive picking or stuff like that. But I wrote it in a way that was kind of harsh. It's all in French, so good luck reading it. But what she told me was, 
basically it really depends on the person she's fine with like that heavy hitting topics but you don't want to like scare someone right away so maybe save the sort of more heavy text for later on once you've presented your artworks a bit more so i would have to like i will have to redo the order of everything and here i did a little creative process and maybe this i could just edit out it's not that important i could just put in the english part which says technical process first comes an underdrawing in ink pen on paper tracing paper using oil and then color laces and thread which is fine but basically it wasn't completely necessary and you want to take out information that isn't so necessary or extraneous uh, when you're doing a professional portfolio. Next, for example, this page where I put an image of my workspace. Um, it's nice to see sort of how I make it, the space in which I make it, but it's not extremely important. Oh, I keep on getting messages! Well, that's a good thing. But like this, I would just take out. Maybe if you were making a student portfolio, it could be helpful. But really, it's better to edit out a lot of stuff and keep the best, most concise text and images in your art portfolio. Because I like to think of it this way. If you're making a art portfolio and you have some very strong pictures and works and text, anything that you add on top of it along with it that is maybe not as strong it's taking attention away from the stuff that's really good so that's the point you want to cut down everything that isn't 100 percent very important or just don't repeat anything like for example here i wrote details a closer look I take textiles, I take watercolors, I write once again about how I play with these mediums, which isn't important because if I say it once, it's enough in your art portfolio. So for example, you would cut down some of this text, but put in some detail pictures, that's fine. But also on these details, you don't want to repeat all of the dimensions, title, dates, mediums, etc. You don't want to repeat yourself. You want to be as concise as possible. Just write like the detail in the title. Mm. Next. Now, what my lovely gallerist lady um, recommended for me was that here I put in an excerpt of my journal or journal intime slash diary in English. And from this diary, it's like quite... I wrote it in a quite literary way. She did remark that I write pretty well, so she highly recommended me to put this text in the first page to really get the viewer into my universe. I think you could do this for an artist statement. Put it on the first page, that's what she recommended for me, so that once you open the art portfolio, you get a bit of context before you dive into all of your works. And here, for example, she remarked how I put in all the techniques, dimensions, and date when it's just a detail image, which is kind of ironic. You should just write the detail in the title and then any references you have. So make it short and sweet. Next, I wrote a bit about my background. So once again, she told me to put this further up in my portfolio so that the viewer, whoever's looking through, can really get an idea of everything I make and my background and who I am as a person just to sort of get to know me before seeing everything I've made. A little picture also of yourself, like a portrait, really helps. My friend took this portrait. Her name is Margot Laurence Neal and she's a great photographer. You can definitely check her out on Instagram. Next is a little bio. So here, once again, I was sort of repeating myself and it wasn't very important. So everything that's in this bio could have been like written more concise and put in on fewer pages. And there's a little detailed image of an artwork I made. And another thing that quite surprised me about the art portfolio, not sure if this applies in the same way for like art students, but for a professional portfolio to send to like gallerists or curators, she recommended me to not make like this style. Oh gosh, I'm not doxing myself, am I? No, I'm not. I covered up my info with lace. So you can't see this, but basically don't make a portfolio CV resume that looks sort of very squarish and 
um, completely square, basically. And a lot of this stuff, I could just rewrite my biography or introduction. So there's no need to make this sort of CV where you it looks like you're applying for an engineering job. You don't really need that. And it kind of, once again, is a little bit distracting. I've added a page with publications and articles, which she mentioned wasn't that important. You just really want to get the artworks, artist statements slash biography and What's really important is listing out where you've exhibited, like really every every place, every exhibition, collective exhibitions, all the prizes and awards you've gotten, residencies, stuff like that. Put that all in one page next to your bio or background and to put that all together. So it's easy to remember and it really sticks. And overall advice that she gave me now for a bit of context, I met her and normally you ju don't just like walk into a gallery and ask to take a rendezvous for portfolio review but I think I was pretty lucky because it was quite a few years back. I remember it was a time where I won a lot of uh, art competitions and at that time I had like this surprise extra bunch of prize money um, from one of getting one of my artwork stolen <laughs> and replacing it so there was this drawing at her gallery that I really liked so I bought it and that's how we developed a relationship and that way she was really kind to look over my portfolio and give me some really valuable advice so stay tuned for more about that but basically she told me as a gallerist as someone really in the art world from the um, business side for any young artist that she mentors or speaks with, she recommends basically to put your work on exhibition whenever you can, wherever you can. And you really need to build a network from school, from acquaintances, friends. Nowadays, I think you can do it on social media too. Um, really get to know curators. That's how you get to know curators and other artists and people who will be uh, creating exhibitions like that. And she also told me another important thing to not force yourself to hang around with people you don't like or can't stand just because you want to, I don't know, network. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of bad rap from networking gets uh, comes from. But that's basically her most precious advice. And she told me to, let me see, I wrote it down here somewhere. Put yourself in the direction of your dreams. That's what she told me. The little... Uh, mantra and she told me it comes from a techno song so I'll definitely keep that in mind it's really similar to my own little personal mantra which is every day take a step towards your goals and dream life and that's what I'm doing right now basically write down descriptions right next to all of the artworks on your portfolio edit down the text as much as you can keeping only the most important information so like prizes exhibitions residencies awards stuff like that. Don't repeat stuff you've already written. Exhibit as much as you can. Also, don't get like scammed or abused by some people who might be like preying on young artists that way, trying to get exposure. So I'll make another video on that, but make it concise. If you're making a professional art portfolio, make it look nice. Don't repeat yourself, get good images, get descriptions, titles, and put down only the most important information, but do present yourself and let the viewer get to know you. Okay, I hope you found this video very helpful. I know that this information you don't really get classes for, and just a reminder, the link to book a portfolio coaching session is down below in the description, and once again, it comes with the complete guide to French art school, which shows you a lot of tips for the concours d'entrée and the curriculum, all of the stuff like that, which you'll find inside. I know that you're very lucky to have watched this. Okay, so wishing you guys a good day, morning, afternoon, evening, good night, wherever you are. And I'm going to go watch a happy movie because if my voice sounded a bit funny or I seemed a little bit tired, it's because I spent like half an hour crying in my hot bath. Yeah, I know. Life is like so hard for a princess. <laughs> no, not because of the portfolio review. That went fine. Um, I actually really want to get a cat. 
and I've been seeing oh god I don't know why it's so strange I really want a little black Bombay cat with orange yellow eyes and I'm going to name him Samson after the opera and the biblical character but I just like really want a cat and I've been seeing these Instagram reels of a zookeeper like pooping her panthers and tigers and cheetahs and I really want a cute little black kitty oh my god I feel like Jeremy fragrance a little bit I went off a little bit but that's fine she's an artist that explains it okay have a great time until i see you again okay stay tuned follow me on instagram on la princesse de boza and you can find my brand of silk dresses with french lace um, in the description and just a reminder the link to book a portfolio coaching session is down below in the description and once again it comes with the complete guide to french art school which shows you a lot of tips for the concours d'entrée and the curriculum all of the stuff like that which you'll find inside okay see you very soon okay au revoir thanks for watching and um, use this information wisely and intentionally Bye, bonne nuit, good night, see ya.